So as usual, I was scrolling Twitter and I saw this tweet. Why the f*** would you play video games? Uh, but it's fun. Uh, but it gives me happiness. Why'd you start like that? No, it helps you escape from the real world, escape from the reality. So I know this because I was one of those guys that was addicted to playing video games. There has Fortnite, to be a pipeline. CSGO, Apex Legends, whatever the f you name it. I was addicted to them because I was trying to escape from the reality, from the real world that I was broke, insecure, lonely, and miserable. What? Why does gaming have to be any of the, associated with any of that? It's always interesting that gaming gets this rap. I don't understand why it keeps going on and it just keeps being peddled. And for what reason? It's just gaming. If like you don't want to play games, that's fine. But why do people have to go to social media and show like they're, oh, I got rid of gaming and it changed my life? No, no, you, you became more focused and that's all it really is. So maybe you were playing too much gaming and that's all. But I never understand why so many people care this much about other people playing games. But hey, my name is Ken and I know a few things and I would appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, and subscribe. I'm always gonna talk about these, by the way. I have to, because why does like this have to be a thing? Why is there a pipeline for this content? Who is watching this content and being like, yes, this video changed my life. I, but you know what's not changing anybody's life? This new dually. Uh, yeah, no, Nintendo put out uh, more about this weapon. I'm not gonna lie to you, it, this is, I don't understand why they did this to the Dozer Duelies. And the biggest aspect of the fact is that the regular nozzle is used for longer range while the secondary rapid fire nozzle can make short work of nearby targets. Bro, they made a Nova Duelies. Why? I think some people were saying that it's like, it's either it's spread shot or the regular shots are like, you know, four shots and it's roll is like five. I don't know what it is. I don't understand anymore. I just have to see for myself. But then on top of that, they gave it ink mine and whale. Why? What was the point of this? There's gonna be somebody that will push this to the top. And I know you're in the comments. I know that you're going to say it's really not that bad and you have to open your mind. All right, man, with the third eye or, you know, woman also. Uh, but at the same time, bro, what was the point of it? So just even seeing it, I'm just really not impressed by it. Also, the Recycled Brella 24 MK1. Now, this is a very interesting weapon. I have to say that for myself. I know Char has probably talked about this a lot. Keen has probably talked about this a lot. There are people that going into this like in depth, but marker, boohoo, like it, it got that line marker, of course. And it's the lottery. Some weapon has to get that sub. And then on top of that, big bubbler. Now I have to say, I'm actually interested in this. I'm gonna use it for 0.5 seconds because in my mind, I think that this is absolutely dope. But then I, I realized that I'm terrible at Brellas, so I'm just not going to use this at all. But I have to say that it's actually an interesting weapon. I I, I want to see where this goes, see if people actually maybe use it. I wonder if it does have that RNG that you see a little bit. I'm, I'm Maybe that's like a trick with the camera, but I have no idea, actually. And as you guys know, we have 52, 52 curling bomb and splatter screen. But I will say this, this might actually be a decent weapon with it, but... The funny thing is the community, I, I think, still has it as like a ban. So most people probably won't use it. And I don't know if Nintendo will do anything about it even more, which they, they probably will. Now, this got the biggest praise in the whole entire community. And I know that Sour as a content creator is probably ecstatic, jumping up and down. They probably saved this game for him. And in all honesty, he's been waiting for so long at this point. They need to put the up the meme of basically like and put Sour's obviously the waited a thousand years or whatever. And yes, they gave Squiffer, Zipcaster, an auto bomb. And people think that this is actually just going to be a fun kit. Now, I'm not gonna try this because I'm just gonna embarrass myself, but I, I see the montages now. So you might as well get the anime music going. And honestly, I really, I, I need to, I, I would like to do a challenge of whoever can get like the best clips for this. And I actually would do it. I've done these in the past before on my stream, but yeah, that's the new one. What do you guys think? Some are really bad. A lot of them are are, are really bad. I, I kind of want to see what else they're going to do, but I have to highlight this. Bursty put up this tweet. Inside look at Splatoon 3 balance team designing the new kits. But then it dawns on you that it's completely silent. No one is doing anything. There was no typing, no mouse clicking, nothing. We saw one guy looking at the Google homepage, but he wasn't searching for anything. He was just staring blankly at the screen. <laughs> now I have to say that is a very disrespectful meme. I like, honestly, 
I, I have to say the person like Bursty, I, I, how you thought of this, this is one of the best memes I've seen. I'm sorry. This should just be used in general, but I know some people will be like, why are you coming at the game devs? But I know a lot of people are wondering, why does it feel like things are randomly generated? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So I didn't want to jump the gun about this because I saw the JP tweet. and I was like, maybe that's a translation. Maybe this is something that they are going to change when the North America account tweets. But no, they continued it. So Splatoon North America tweeted a note for part timers. Bone Rattle Arena, the final map for Salmon Run arrives with fresh season 2024. That is a very bold statement to make. A place of exile that's been modified into an arena Salmonoids battle day and night here to see who's strongest. They're equally eager to fight anyone after their eggs. Now, I understand that, you know, things do have to end, but it is a very interesting decision when, you know, people were looking forward to certain things, I guess because some people did say that since Mr. Grizz is technically done, why would you have to go back to those places or certain places that they have? So I understand that a lot of people want to arc Polaris, but doesn't look like it's going to happen. And this might actually be it because you see the actual like zip lines or ink rails better yet. But even to the point, I think Char even brought up the fact that we're almost done with maps too. This is a very interesting decision in my opinion. I want to see where they go from here before I actually give my full thoughts, but that's interesting. So as I said, a lot of people saw these things and just all the updates that were going on. So the question is, where's the direct? And I'm gonna be honest with you, as soon as I saw the Splatoon information drop, because I feel like side order is definitely direct worthy. And I, I still think they should have done it because it builds a lot of hype, a lot more hype around it. I don't think they understand how much direct are, are love, but maybe they might be saving it for something crazy because Pyro or Pyoro, however you say it, I apologize. They basically said, is this the direct? And basically they're one of the people that they, they, they know things and, Basically, people were talking to them about it, and they said, when I said I heard nothing, people were saying my sources had been caught. And that is a really crazy statement to say. So all I have to say is, hey, maybe next month. Maybe maybe next month with the Switch 2. What do you guys think? So the reviews are out for Mario vs. Donkey Kong, and they actually look decent, like genuinely. I didn't think that this was going to be a bad game at all. I thought that they would be around like, you know, eights or whatever, because people would be like, oh, this is a remake. But I will say I will be streaming this and I'm very excited. I used to love these games and I, I absolutely love Mario and first Donkey Kong. So I'm ready to give this a try. I'm ready to play it again. And as I said, I'm by my Twitch. If you haven't already, make sure to do that, please. Like what else do you have to do? Maybe other things. But outside of that, I'm actually really excited to give this a try. I played the demo. So let me know what you guys think. Are you guys picking this up? So you guys know I like talking about Power World. And funny enough, there was the last topic of the fact that they had lost a certain amount of players and to be fair with you it's really just the fact that people beat the game that's it there's no microtransactions there's no anything else it, they just beat the game and that's it other games that are multiplayer games hook people in and they are have a continual loop this game you really just kind of build another server keep maybe keep that going but that's really it and if you want to do that you can but when you get to a certain point with the game i i can see people being like all right i'm kind of done so Bucky, Pow World, and Craftopia, basically the one of the people I guess would have to say one of the devs that works there. I, I follow them on Twitter and I, I see a bunch of their stuff. They basically said this, with Pow World quickly approaching the one month mark, it's interesting to look back at my own thoughts for launch. In May of 2023, I was convinced that Pow World could break the 50,000 player mark. Anything above that seemed unattainable. That's crazy though. And I certainly never expected to reach into the million. It has taken years to get to this point and Pow World only really begins from here. Everyone is working hard to fix the issues and prepare new content and pals. Some of you may have had your fun over the last three weeks and found yourself putting the game down. That's fine, exactly, I keep saying this. This emerging POW world has lost X percentage of its player base. This course is lazy, but it's probably also a good time to step in and reassure those of you capable of reading past a headline that it is fine to take breaks from games. You don't need to feel bad about that. POW world, like many games before it, isn't in a position to pump out massive amounts of new content on a weekly basis. New content will come and it's going to be awesome. But these things take a little bit of time. There are so many amazing games out there to play. You 
don't need to feel guilty about hopping from game to game. If you are still playing Power World, we love you. If you're no longer playing Power World, we still love you. And we hope come back for round two when you're ready. Play lots of games, try different genres, and frequently flick through indie libraries to find hidden gems. Yes. Like, I, I don't understand why anybody else would have thought that that would be like the game is just like losing players for any other reason. That's it. Like, people probably played enough of it. They're waiting for new content. In all honesty, truthfully, they could add even a bigger map and just add even more to it. And that could actually just be even crazier. The expansion of this game could be insane. It truthfully can. And with the added money and what they have, who knows what they could do. So let me know what you guys think. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know if you guys have noticed gaming discourse has been going crazy on Twitter. And this is why I'd be on it. And as I said, like I, I scroll Twitter, so you don't have to. So just make sure to give me a like, please. And at the end of the day, I find it funny that it's always Kotaku. And another article actually put out something similar. But basically, they said Immortals of Avian proves it's a grim time for single player games. How, 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 how? No, no, genuinely, how do you even say that in this era? Like you've had just so many games in the past year. You've literally had Spider-Man. I know some people hated it, but Hogwarts Legacy or whatever it's called did it absolutely insane. Tears of the Kingdom. There's just so many other games that have just done so well. I, I don't even know what to tell you. Baldur's Gate, what, what? Alan Wake 2, Resident Evil. Come on, man. Like, I, I don't understand how that's even possible. But the community notes even said half of the best selling games last year were single player games. The article also does not mention Boulder Gate 3, which has 500K positive reviews on Steam and won the VGA Game of the Year award. It's always interesting to watch these narratives build up. It's just like, why do you even push this? I don't understand. As I said, gaming discourse is getting out of control. And if a lot of you had realized, that a rumor was what started the whole discourse of the Xbox controversy. And this led to just basically just even more discourse, just even more people bringing back the console wars. It feels like the good old days. It feels like the 2000s where people used to just get up in arms about their favorite consoles and call each other different things by their like the game names, you know, but you, you could probably tell me what they are. But Xbox did a podcast and they finally cleared some things up. Summary of the Xbox podcast and business update. And this is from Cami. Four Xbox games are going multi-platform. Declined to name which, but it's not Starfield or Indiana Jones. Reports indicate that they will be Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, and Grounded. Uh, that that makes a lot of sense. It, it really does. I Like, it, 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 times are changing. That's really all it is. No fundamental change to Xbox exclusivity. Exciting hardware news coming holiday 2024. Series X refresh handheld, who, who, who knows actually, honestly. Diablo 4 comes to Xbox Game Pass on March 28th. Next gen Xbox roadmap is already in the works. Goal is to deliver the largest technical leap ever. Game Pass at 34 million subscribers. Xbox first party games are still coming to Game Pass day one. And as I said, it, it, gaming discourse have, has gone insane. A lot of these are rumors, people putting feelers out, people just saying anything. You see it all the time with Nintendo Directs. It's actually hilarious. Genuinely, it's very funny to see what goes on. But there was even more that led to just everybody being like, you know, what is going on right now? I think gaming is just changing, but that's just me. So Tom Warren posted, here's President Hiroki Totoki discussing the opportunity to grow PlayStation games on PC multi-platform. And the other potential driver is uh, the first party title generation. Uh, because in the past, as you all know, uh, we wanted to popularize console and uh, the title was uh, something uh, and uh, the first party title main purpose was to make our hardware or the console popular, right? It is true, right? But, but there's a synergy to it. So if we have a strong, uh, first party content, uh, not only with our console, but also other Times platforms like uh, computers. And the first party can be grown 
uh, with yeah, multi-platforms, and that can help operating profit to improve. So that's another one that we want to practically work on. I personally think there are opportunities out there uh, for improvement of margin. So I would like to go aggressive on um, improving our margin performance. So I was going to find out what day and date release was because I was trying to understand basically multiple platforms in one like day. So basically on release, which is actually kind of a crazy statement to happen. But hey, like that just means times are really changing and people are noticing that things might be different soon. I don't know what this means for consoles. I don't know how this is going to look for the future, but that's just very interesting. And on top of that, there's a lot going on. Wario64 tweeted, Sony Interactive Entertainment will not release any new major existing franchise titles before March 31st. 2025 regarding first party software we aim to continue this focus on producing high quality works and, and developing live service games sony group president chief operating officer and chief financial officer hiroki totoki said but while major projects are currently under development we do not plan to release any new major existing franchises titles next fiscal year editor's note begins April 1st, 2024, and ends March 31st, 2025, like God of War Ragnarok and Marvel's Spider-Man 2. So this led to Nintendo fans finding the opportunity to now say enough time has passed and the Wii U is better than the PS5. When I say I didn't see Nintendo fans trying to come back into the console wars, I, did, I never saw this coming again. I thought a lot of Nintendo fans just did what they wanted to do and left it alone. But you had people like Ant Dude on Twitter that said, enough time has passed. The Wii U is greater than the PS5. This is actually a very crazy statement. And I'm gonna be honest with you, at first I was like, why would anybody say that? Now, it's funny because somebody actually brought this up by the name of Samori and they said, we live in a world where the Wii U, even after the Switch deducted exclusives, still has 22 more exclusives than the PlayStation 5. Now, I don't remember how long the Wii U was out, but it was out for a decent amount of time. Maybe you got to give it a little bit more time. But as you guys see here, we all know that Nintendo's about their exclusives. And this is actually kind of crazy when you compare the two. But somebody took it even further and said, forget the Wii U, the Virtual Boy has more exclusives. <laughs> Bro, as I said, I didn't see this coming. And now Nintendo is back in like the, the line of level, like fire. I don't know why. But it's actually interesting. More people are just giving their thoughts. And the person by the name of John Hartsfield said, Nintendo is easily the smartest gaming company. They told us over a decade ago about that blue ocean. They told us Sony and Microsoft were going to end up killing each other off while they were cooling in the background. Got the most exclusives, lowest dev cost, and the most game sales. Now, I, I, I know that this is like, obviously, yes, it does look like they, they did a great job. They put together two of their install bases and that, yes, that, that it makes sense. This is bringing back those console wars. And of course, this just made people highlight that, oh, they make kids games. They have bad online, bad performance, this, that, and the other. And you know, the online, I, I get that. But when it comes to games, they're just for everybody. And that's really it. Pokemon can be enjoyed by younger kids and older, even though it has its issues. Same thing with Smash, same thing with Splatoon. That's all it really is. And they've done a great job. And I have to give Nintendo that. And that's really it. But hey, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the, the reinsurgence or the, the buildup of, of console wars? It's looking like the, the conclusion of console wars. That's actually really what it is. Like the, the companies are making it end. Like the white flags are up. But hey, let me know what you think. One thing I despise about Twitter is the fact that people like to retweet things. And a lot of the times I had already seen that people always like to retweet Team Cherry's tweet about Silk Song. So I get a jump scare every single time I see this. But somebody tweeted, Hollow Knight Silk Song was announced five years ago. Yes, it's been that long. Hey, I, I just want a good game and that's really it. So I'm very excited to see what's going on, but this game has to be massive, but there's no way that they took all this time and this isn't about to be the hardest game ever because they really seem to enjoy making hard games, but I, I'm excited and I, I, whenever we get it, we get it. And that's really it. I, I can't wait to play this game. Hollow Knight 
first of all, is one of my favorite games. I, I replay it all the time. Amazing game. So whenever this is ready to go, I am ready to play it. I've said this before. I would give them more money, honestly and truthfully. I would give them more money. And our last topic of the day is, can they please, like, just do me a favor. Can we, in t next year, maybe, 2025, leave Avatar The Last Airbender alone, please? No more games, no more live adaptations, just leave it alone. If it's not a cartoon, leave it alone. But Gametsu actually tweeted, Avatar The Last Airbender, competitive multiplayer fighting game, announce. Now, if you can do us a favor, and just not make it an arena fighter, that would be amazing. Let's just go in the direction of a traditional fighter, maybe even a platform fighter, but please do not make it an arena fighter. They have already had the issue with the Jujutsu Kaisen one that now has zero players. Not even joking, like it's actually a thing, like I'll show you guys a tweet, but please, just put care into one of these games. So yes, basically the gist of it all is that possibly in 2025, we could be seeing an Avatar The Last Airbender fighting game. Hopefully they just use everything. So there's just more people, like just not just that part. But if they do this, that would actually be really dope. If they did it with bending in mind and just really did it well, that would be amazing in my opinion. But I'm gonna catch you guys later. Thank you guys for, you know, watching. Thank you guys for liking. Thank you guys for commenting. I really do appreciate it. We're actually super close to 18K. I think we should hit it after this video. And I very much appreciate everything. So I'm going to catch you guys later. Have an amazing day. Peace out.